The phrase, the more things change, the more things stay the same, may apply to many things, but not the tower industry. Today, we're gonna unpack some key changes to our safety standard that's become our guiding force. Are you ready? Let's go. I'm here at the Smart Lab facility in Dayton, Ohio for another round of Nate equipment testing. And while I'm here, I ran into James Redlinger, VP of Engineering for Full Wave Tower and Broadcast. James, good to see you here. Sean, great seeing you. James, you had a hand in putting together the new ANSI A10.48 version 2023, right? Yes, sir, one of many. One of many. Well, I actually have okay. my own personal copy here, and I've got a couple questions for you. Let, let's go. So this is the new version, the 2023 version. So what are some of the key takeaways from this version to the 2016 version? Sure. And Sean, let me first say, I'm very impressed that you carry this around with you. That's outstanding. Everywhere I Everybody go. Should. Everywhere Everybody I go. should. Uh, we take great pride in this as an industry. Anytime we talk about the, the 1048, this is the first revision of the A1048 that's come out. The initial release was in 2016, and I always think it's good to take a step back on what's so unique about this industry that warrants its own standard. Why can't we just work with other construction standards that have a long standing? Right. You're essentially developing, among other things, your own custom lifting system for every site you go out to. You're erecting a crane. So that's really, why do we need this? Because you have to serve as the expert out in the field every site you step out onto to build your lifting system, among other things. Some of the major changes that we've really gone through to the current 2023, we've removed all the permissive language that used to be in the 2016 version. There was lots of best practice recommendations, and that's not what standards are about. Standards are about establishing what the minimum requirements are for practice in this industry. So every, every piece of content within that 2016 version, as a committee, we had to look at, and if it had a should statement or a permissive statement, it got taken out. We need to really hone in on minimum requirements. I noticed that you changed the name rigging plan. We changed that term from rigging plan to construction plan so that we're really enveloping the, the full process of working on that tower infrastructure. There are times you go out into the field working on that tower and you're not necessarily working directly with rigging, but you're still impacting potentially strength stability issues with the structure and its supporting foundations. There is no requirement for additional documentation versus what was in 2016. It, it truly is just a, a terminology change. The rigging classes used to be categorized one through four, but I saw that you got rid of class one. What was your main focus on that? We found that there was still consistently some issues with having no documentation at all, stepping onto certain sites that were ultimately being classified as a class one construction plan. So collectively, everyone decided that the best practice moving forward would be full documentation on all construction plans. We still have a four class system. A class four under 2023 is similar to a class four under 2016. However, we just don't have a class one. You're either working class two, class three, or class four. So what does the first class now go up to as far as lifting weight? 500 pounds. 500 pounds. Talk to me more about the antenna pipe rooster head or gin pole. We're now allowed to use those. I think a very good clarification, we've always allowed custom lifting devices to be utilized. However, gin poles do require, have always required a certification. It, and we, the only thing that we had in the 2016 is that it had to at least be considered a class three construction plan or rigging plan back in 2016. Now, again, kind of the nuance that you get into with the, you know, the quote unquote drop in rooster heads or the boom mount pipes, you know, what we ultimately classify as a gin pole is they were not being directly attached to the supporting structure. Gotcha. Yep. So, you know, when we think about a traditional gin pole, we've got basket and bridle rigging. 
with these drop-in rooster heads, you know, they're directly mounting potentially into an antenna mount pipe or a standalone pipe, but ultimately they're relying on an external appurtenance, a mount, to transition those loads back to the support structure. So what that did is ultimately require and struck an engineer, a qualified engineer, to make that site-specific assessment every time you wanted to deploy that piece of equipment, right? Regardless of what you were lifting, yep. You could have been lifting your lunch, yeah. You know, but if, you needed an engineer letter. For you, need, that. you needed an engineer letter. Right. So we, you know, we listened to the concerns. We we understood that there were for people to actually practice under the A1048, the old 2016 version, there were times that there was ultimately a, a need for almost a, a less safe practice. Yeah. And with all the rigging being attached to that supporting structure, it really doesn't allow you to, look, to utilize those type of components whenever you don't have the time, you know, for emergency purposes. Right. Or, you know, again, even for lighter weight lifts. Yeah. So, the, the new procedure that you'll find in the, in the 2023 version does allow for these systems to be utilized for lightweight lift applications with no engineer involvement and ultimately make that determination if it does warrant an exemption. But we essentially have to keep that gross load to under 200 pounds. 200 pounds. It needs to be a lighter weight lift. Yep. You have to have a primary attachment in your rigging system, which is essentially one of the primary load carrying an idler block or redirect block could even be a, a passive safety. And that attachment point can go anywhere above or it can go up to four feet below your highest rigging point on that particular structure. So is it four feet from the block down to the height of the tie back? Or is it four feet diagonal back to the tie back? Sure, that, that's actually four feet from the block vertically down Per standard, we can't go six feet below, eight feet below. Now you can go anywhere above. Anywhere above. And the higher you go structurally, the better. So really? if you've got the headroom, you know, taking it up higher is preferable. Right. Now, we know there's times that you're working on the, the top sector, you're working on top mounted equipment that you just don't have the headroom. Good. The antenna pipe gin pole, you have to proof test your load. How do you go about that? The 2023 version now in section nine identifies each step of that procedure to safely conduct that proof test and for proper documentation purposes. Some of the major high points on there, you have to lift at least 25% above your gross load lift that you're gonna be making. Okay. The load actually needs to be lifted away from the structure to establish that maximum load angle. Mm -hmm. The proof test needs to be held for at least five minutes. Give everyone time to make sure everything is properly rendered to do all the full inspections. Yep. We do currently require no personnel on the tower during okay. the proof test. And we essentially have two types of proof tests that could be conducted. You could do a static proof test. The other option is to go in and, and do an operational test. Right. So Sean, again, on some of the major changes made within the standard, section 13 on operational and non-operational uh, structural loading considerations, and this entire section is really dedicated to defining you know, limitations for construction operations uh, with lots of content on when a qualified engineer needs to be engaged. And I would really encourage uh, anyone out in the field, anyone putting together construction plans, get very familiar with this with this new section 13 because it really helps define those fence posts. Yeah. James, this is all great information. Thanks for being here to clarify all this. Thanks, Sean. The ANSI A10.48 has been a good thing for the entire tower industry. If you want to purchase your own copy, visit the Nate website where you can purchase your own standard. And thank you for your feedback, where we continue to strengthen these standards and keep things relevant as they evolve. The tighter the standard gets, the better off it is for all of us. Thank you for watching and stay safe.